UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer described the climate crisis as the single biggest opportunity for next-generation jobs on Tuesday, as the second day of the COP29 climate summit kicked off in Azerbaijan's capital Baku. Speaking outside the convention, he announced a £1 billion order for offshore wind turbine blades that would generate jobs in Hull, northeast England. This is an opportunity for the UK not just to show leadership, but to get those jobs and to ensure that we're at the forefront of the race for those next-generation jobs," he said. Asked whether meeting the UK's ambitious emissions goals would mean British citizens would have to cut back on eating meat and taking flights, Starmer accepted they were difficult targets but insisted they were achievable and that the main driver would be switching the UK to clean power by 2030. He also said he looked forward to working with US President-elect Donald Trump, who will likely pull the United States out of the landmark Paris Agreement and try to roll back many of the Biden administration's signature climate moves. Several big names and powerful countries are noticeably absent from this year's COP, unlike past climate talks which had the star power of a soccer World Cup. But 2024's climate talks are more like the International Chess Federation World Championship, lacking the recognizable names but big on nerd power and strategy. The top leaders of the 13 largest carbon dioxide polluting countries will not appear with their countries responsible for more than 70% of 2023's heat trapping gases. Biggest polluters and strongest economies China and the United States aren't sending their number ones. The four most populous nations with more than 42% of all the world's population aren't having leaders speak. I think it's very important for the United Kingdom to show leadership on the climate challenge. It's a very important challenge of our time. It's also, I've long believed, the single biggest opportunity for the next generation of jobs. And that's demonstrated in the fact that this morning here at COP, I'm announcing a one billion pound order for blades for offshore wind, which will be jobs in Hull. Now that's really welcome news, I'm really pleased. There's a global race on for the jobs of the future in renewables. I'm absolutely determined that the UK is not just going to be in that race, but we're going to be winning that race because that race is measured in well-paid jobs across the United Kingdom. That's the single most important thing as far as I'm concerned. Well, I look forward to working with President Trump, of course I do, as I'll work with all global leaders on this. Um, but we just had a very successful international summit for investment just a few weeks ago, which brought in over £60 billion worth of investment. Uh, most of that was in renewables, and that's investment directly into the United Kingdom. Uh, that's vitally important, that's jobs for generations to come right across the United Kingdom, and that is of central importance. My main mission, which is to make sure that we grow the economy in the United Kingdom, and I, what I mean by that is living standards, people feeling better off across the United Kingdom. And I think this is an opportunity for the UK, not just to show leadership, um, but to get those jobs um, and to ensure that we're at the forefront of the race for those next generation of jobs. Well, I'll set out our um, goal later on today, but look, it will be ambitious, and that's measured not by telling people what to do, um, it's measured by making sure that we get to clean power by 2030. That's the single most important target on the way to the emissions and that will bring with it lower bills for people for their energy. It'll give them independence so that tyrants like Putin can't put his boot on our throat causing all sorts of difficulties for our energy bills and it comes with the next generation of jobs. So that, yes so I accept, I, ex well. I accept it's, uh, it's difficult target. Um, it's an achievable target, but it's not about telling people how to live their lives. I'm not interested in that. I am interested in making sure that their energy bills are stable, that we've got energy independence, um, and that we also, along the way, pick up the next generation of jobs, which will be measured across the United Kingdom, good, well-paid jobs um, in every community. I'm centrally and very interested in that. Thank you very much. Thank you. COP28 President Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber opened the 29th session of the Conference of the Parties by expressing gratitude to delegates for their commitment to addressing global climate challenges. In his remarks, Al Jaber emphasized unity, action, and the UAE's dedication to fostering partnerships and dialogue amid global complexity and conflict. He urged attendees to continue working together to deliver meaningful result. Assalamu alaikum. Distinguished delegates, it gives me great pleasure.
to declare open the 29th session of the Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Your Excellencies, colleagues, friends, and members of every delegation, it is a great pleasure to join you here in Baku for the opening of COP29. And let me begin by thanking our hosts for their warm welcome and generous hospitality. And allow me to extend my gratitude to every person in this room. By being here today, you have all made a choice to make a difference. And as I prepare to hand over the COP presidency, I urge you all to prove once again that we can unite, act, and deliver. <laughs> Excellencies, friends, we meet at a time of complexity and conflict. And against this backdrop, allow me to say that we in the United Arab Emirates will always choose partnership over polarization, dialogue over division, and peace over provocation.